Hello everyone. Something a little different today. We're going to do some self-healing. Now, lots of people just concentrate on the chakras. But today we're going to concentrate on the whole the whole body. So it's just probably about a half an hour's worth. So this is not ASMR. This is just pure healing that you can do yourself, even if you're not attuned to a healing mode like Reiki, pranic healing, something like that. So everyone's got this in them and it works along the, the same principles as the power of prayer. It's intent and positive attitude, positive mental attitude, okay? Trust that it is working and it will. It may be subtle, but it will help you and it should help you calm down and relax at the same time. So does a similar thing to a meditation or an ASMR, lowers the blood pressure and relaxes you. Okay, so first of all, before we do anything, we need to ground. So if you'd like to either sit on your chair with your feet firmly on the floor, but I suggest that you sit on the floor, maybe supported a little bit higher on a, a yoga block or a cushion if you struggle. Oh, the dog wants to come over. Do you want some healing, Alfie? Okay, go and sit down. Go and sit down. <laughs> okay, so I'm healing my dog. I'm healing my dog. Come on, Alfie, go and sit down. Go and sit down. Go and sit down. I'm doing a video, darling. I'm doing a video. Go and sit down. Go on, go on, back on your bed. Go on, back on your bed, over there. That's not working, is it? What is the matter with you? Sorry about that everyone, that's my darling boy Alfie. Okay, where were we? <laughs> okay, so the first thing we need to do is to ground and protect and make that connection with the earth. So I suggest taking a deep breath in for the sky above you, breathe out any annoyances, any worries, any anxiety. Another deep breath in for the ground below you. And then breathe out and relax. And the last deep breath in for the sea surrounding our sacred lands. And relax. Then imagine roots growing out of you, either directly out of your backside. The perineum is the specific place of the root chakra. Or if you find it easier, open the holes in the bottom of your feet and send the roots down that way. And they grow down and down and down until they get a foothold somewhere deep in the earth to keep you rooted. Then I'd like you to protect yourself, imagining the a candle flame, that God spark right there at your solar plexus. Push it outwards and upwards and down. Out, out, out until it comes out to you, probably to about there and to about there and below you. This is your own protection and you can make it any color you like. Or you can use something like 
Jesus Christ, crosses around you, shields around you, angel wings around you, whatever your preferred method of protection is. And then ask your guides and angels to come in and help you heal. Then I want you to imagine earth energy, healing energy, moving up from the earth, up your root system. Imagine that you're drinking it in your roots. All the way up you, either up through your feet or up through your root chakra all the way up to your heart center where it splits and goes down your arms and out of your hands and if you just sort of bounce them and hold them about there hopefully you can feel a current of electricity some of you may be able to feel this quite strongly, others just slightly, but others might not feel it at all. The Reiki masters and the Qigong masters say, imagine that you can feel it and in a week or two you will. Because this work is intent, it will come out and trust that it's happening. And then we're going to start at our feet. So literally putting your hands on your feet and imagining that energy being fed up into us, to our heart chakra, splitting and moving down our hands and into our feet and our ankle. So I'm holding myself like this and the healing is coming out there and some of you may feel it coming out of your fingers. And we'll just do a few hand positions like this. Sending light, love and healing to ourselves. And we just hold this position for a few minutes, probably about three. And if you struggle to concentrate, you can repeat a mantra like peace, healing, tranquility. Peace, healing and tranquility. Peace healing and tranquility. If you are suffering arthritis or some kind of pain anywhere, peace, healing and pain relief. Peace, healing and pain relief. Peace, healing and pain relief. Love and light, love and light, love and light. It really doesn't matter what you say, as long as it's positiveness, really. Everything's about being positive. You may feel that you need to breathe. <sighs> Sighing and breathing out are good releases of tension. And then you probably find sometimes the healing just tails off by itself, in which case you need enough. Or you just sort of about know, instinctively know when you've had enough there. You also may be governed by time. But the more time you can spend doing this kind of work on yourself, the more it will flow out of your hands. So then I'm going to move up the leg. So I'm going to put one hand on my shin and another one on my knee. 
And if you find that you feel healing more like that with your hand away from you as I do, hold your hand away, even both hands away. I actually feel the chi more, but when I'm healing patients, the healing is not about me. Many people don't have a partner or families, and they need that human touch. There's also the thought patterns of, if you've got a pain in your shoulder and someone puts their hand on your shoulder, for instance, you subconsciously know that that is being worked on so you sort of make yourself better as well, psychosomatic, it doesn't matter. Sometimes you may feel that stuff needs to come out, in which case you can grab it, have a trash can near you, flick it into the trash can, hold it out, and let your angels and guides take care of it and deal it. Imagine white healing light coming down from the source above you through your crown, third eye, throat, down to the heart where it splits, comes down your shoulders and you can send white light out and flick it off like that or you can stop at the throat and whoosh, blow white light. Some of you can be attuned to the violet flame and do it that way. But for now, let's just heal. Peace, healing and tranquility. Peace, healing and tranquility. Peace, healing and tranquility. Some of you may feel a popping and a whizzing in your knee if you suffer from knee pain. This is quite common. And you may feel the need to swish things away from the auric field. There are no hard and fast rules really, apart from grounding and protecting at the beginning. You cannot do this wrong. Okay, so then we're moving up the body. Probably on your thighs and your glutes. And if you, you can't actually touch the place that you need to, you can think of that place. Same sort of thing. I've actually got my hand on the hip joint, the, the side of the pelvis here. So I'm actually sending healing to that area, as well as my thigh and, and gl the glutes. Peace, healing and serenity. Peace, healing and serenity. Peace, healing and serenity. Peace, healing and serenity. Peace healing and serenity. And then I take, I leave the same hand on my hip and I move the other one to the other hip. 
So I'm now sending to both hips. And if you really want to try this, you can see if you can bounce energy between the joints, like a ping pong ball, just to make sure that the energy is not blocked, there's no blockages. Because really this area you are working on is the base and the sacral, so it's the digestive area, the sexual area as well. And a lot of people do suffer lower backache and hip problems. And if you feel like you need to move your head like that, like I do, that's perfectly fine. Even when I'm doing this on clients, I typically work from toe to ankle and up doing this kind of, I literally go like that to move it. So I'm, I'm imagining my nose moving it, if you like, and that works and unblocks things. Release, release, release. You can also add color healing to this. So this area here, we the whole area that we've done so far would be red and orange. And then you can move your hand to your other knee. I'm hovering just above my knee here. And you may feel like one side of you, more energy comes out than the other. You may also find that one hand is stronger than the other. Normally it tends to be the hand that you use to write with will probably send chi out better. And the other one would be your receiving hand, and that would actually receive things better. So you can actually put your hand out and ask your guides and angels to give you a crystal, for instance, to pop in somewhere. If you haven't got that crystal to hand, and so you would put the non-dominant hand out. Let's see, I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask them, please put a crystal in my hand for my knee. Yep, there it is, I felt the energy shift. So I'm now going to literally pop that into my knee. Breathe out. Thank you, guides and angels. And then I'll move down to the ankle. In fact, I'll probably hold the ankle and the foot together if your hand is big enough. Peace healing and serenity. And even moving down to the toes, give your feet a little massage if you want, that's quite good on the pressure points, the pads and the toes. And holding the toes like that. 
If you can't reach your feet and toes, then you can just literally sit on a chair and hold your hands like that and do it with the intent of touching the toes and it will get there as well. Okay, so that's the bottom half done. So now I'm going to move my hands to this area or, you, or that area, whichever you feel. A lot of people have problems around this area. So hands there if you feel you need it there. There, there. One on each side like this, that is also all right as well. The same kind of thing, peace, healing and tranquility, pain relief, pain relief. Incidentally, if you are into your angelic stuff, the angel who helps with healing is Archangel Raphael, who has a a very green energy. Some of you may have seen my green calcite. That's got Archangel Michael's energy in and fairy energy. And you may keep feeling you need to move your hands. This is also perfectly fine. This is especially good if you're sitting at a desk all day hunched over you you know you need to sort of straighten up and stretch sending healing just to the back of your rib cage either side is is wonderful probably easier to put your hands actually on your torso rather than holding them like that and you can even imagine where your arms are, the gaps in between, our oh, wings, oh yeah. Bat wings for me, because I'm a bit bats. <laughs> Let your imagination fly, and if you want to do a meditation whilst you do this kind of thing, visualization, journey work, you know, perhaps you can visualize that you've gone to a healing clinic or a hospital, where it does energy healing. Ask your guides to come in and help you as well, because they will. Lots of little other things that you can do. And then we get to this area. Fingers are on my heart, just above your breasts. Sending healing energy. Now remember, healing energy is classed as an intelligent life force. It will find the place it needs to go. So that if you're somewhere public and you don't want to be seem to be a bit of a weirdo doing this sort of stuff just put your hands on your thighs no one knows you're doing it and you can just place them in one place and it will do the same you know because if you sit there in a restaurant like this people are going to give you funny looks so But you can move them up and down the front line.
Love, light and forgiveness. Love, light and forgiveness. Love, light and forgiveness. Love, light and forgiveness. And as I'm saying that, I can feel my throat is feeling a bit off. So I've obviously got, so, got something there to deal with. So I'm just going to angle my hands up. Like they, they, you probably find that they want to push out sometimes because that's where it is in the auric field. This is also a forgiveness area because the throat chakra is very well and closely connected to the heart chakras. dog wants to come in again he's such a nuisance bless his cotton socks I've put a whopping great fossil there so he can't move in okay and you can move your hands out you can touch your shoulders like that or if you can't reach them just just pop them there Sending it right through to back to your shoulder blades. A lot of people, especially if they're sitting at desks, have upper back problems. Really give, us, give a little stretch. If you feel that you need to move and stretch your body whilst you're doing this, it's a very good thing to do. Oh, the rain stopped. Nice and quiet now. It's been throwing it down all day with rain here in the UK. England is having a cleansing on voting day. <gasps> Goodness knows we need it. But anyway. Sometimes squeezing the arms is quite nice. Maybe you want to do this around the throat at the back. Just sort of move things. This is whatever feels good for you, really. Some people may just want to go like that. Some people may feel that they need to go like that. If you can reach around like this and it's not too painful, always good to have little stretches as well. For some people it's quite painful to hold their arms up all the time, but remember what I said, just put your hands there or there and tell it where to go. Now, quite a lot of people want to calm themselves down so they put their hands on their heads peace healing and serenity this may come in handy if you're having headaches peace healing and serenity If you have a monkey mind, you may want to 
Tell yourself to calm down. Calm down. Nobody wants anything from me at this moment. Nobody needs anything from me at this moment. I deserve peace, healing and serenity. I deserve half an hour of time to help myself. I understand that this is quite hard. Maybe that would be simpler. Yes, in fact it is. It's not hurting my shoulders so much. I do suffer from upper back ache because I'm literally on my knees weeding gardens every day. So I'm actually hunched over a lot. Not in a dissim in not a dissimilar way to people at a computer desk all day. The temples. So the temples and the forehead I'm doing together. And the eyes. And you may find, as I said earlier, your hands sort of get pushed out to where they want to be. Mine seem to be, want to be, oh, about nine inches away from me. I can feel that on my nasal passages, my third eye, my actual eyes, and my temples. And you tell yourself you are worth it. You are brilliant. You need healing as well. And you need peace and quiet to calm yourself down, lower your blood pressure in this busy life we all lead. And then again down the face I feel I need to go I'm actually feeling the need to, to flush the energy down and out of my feet. And then you can repeat as necessary. I stop the flow of Reiki like this. And then I thank my guides and helpers. Reground again if you need to by growing those roots out of you and into the ground below you. And then carry on with your day. If you decide that you haven't got enough time and you want some healing just before you sleep, we actually call this corpse pose in the Reiki world. A lot of us, or pharaoh pose I call it, uh, 
healing like that and asking your guides and helpers to come in you will most likely fall asleep which is fine sleep is healing and you know you don't need to remember it all or as i keep saying hands on thighs as you lie back at the side it works the same it is all with the power of intent no right and wrong way and just see what feels good for you what works for you some things will, some things won't. But give yourself a bit of healing, at least once a week. We do all need it. You know, and, it, and it's, it's chi, it's earth chi or ki or prana or energy. You can do this with the Holy Spirit if you're very Christian inclined. You know, whatever. As long as it's good, wholesome, and your mindset is for the highest benefit, it will work. So, blessings to you. Have a practice and see how you get on. And I'll see you in another video. Bye-bye.